So my my idea was uh, using CRISPR Cas9 uh, to create peanuts that don't cause allergies. Yes. Um, so I have a nut allergy, and like without if if I if I, could, if I could just try peanut butter, like everyone like talks so, so highly about peanut butter, like it's so awesome. And stuff. Actually, like, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um, dig it any harder, but I basically. PBJ man is the way forward, PBJ? bro. <laughs> okay. it's, okay. it's the way forward, man. Well, if you've never heard of CRISPR, it's a gene editing tool. So it allows you to modify the genome of any organism. And as Gibran puts it quite well, it's basically like the find and cut functionality on your keyboard. But this isn't new. I mean, we've been editing genes since the 70s. Um, we've been doing it on animals, food, on bacteria. We're using medicine. CRISPR is basically a quicker, cheaper, and more precise way to do it. In this video, I talked to Gibran, a 17-year-old who is using CRISPR to create non-allergic peanuts. If you want to find out more, check out the full video on YouTube. We discuss biohacking, the ethics of bioengineering. Uh, we discuss how spirituality and religion plays all into this and a lot more. So yeah. Enjoy the video. And what was really fascinating to me as well is that you're 17, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, turning, I'm turning 18 in like seven days. August 10th is my birthday. So all right. All right. All right. Happy birthday for the future. Um, Thank you. And, uh, but, but yeah, technically you're 17 and yep. you are basically playing around with CRISPR. So I was like, I mean, kids these days, I mean, they're not on the Xbox. They're playing around with CRISPR. All right, all right. I see what we're <laughs> playing. No, 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 no. <laughs> so please, please give me some background to that. How exactly did you find yourself in there? Yeah, I mean, so tech. So actually, I joined this. I guess the reason I got into gene editing in the first place uh, is because I joined this program back in like September. So I'm not sure if you've heard of TKS or the knowledge society yes i i've basically been through your your profile there i've seen actually your articles are really good and oh, I, okay. I listened to your talk on the podcast as well and oh, apparently yeah, you've yeah. only been doing this for like eight months right or something like that yeah eight months yeah yeah yeah, yeah. interesting very interesting <laughs> yeah so um yeah so because of this program uh they basically like it's a 10-month program they introduce you to like a bunch of emerging technologies like ai quantum computing like i, I blockchain like i haven't even mm. heard these technologies before mm. right but, and also gene editing. So uh, basically because of that, I dived into gene editing uh, and they have like this sort of a process you follow. So in the beginning, you just like learn about gene editing, you write like an article on it. So that's why I wrote an article on like prime editing. I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw that one. Uh, and then after that, you do an experiment. So like I did that CRISPR thing at home, I made a video on it and I also yeah. made an article on it. Yeah. And then after that, you also like do a review, so like a review paper. So you like research a topic about gene editing, for instance, you write an article on it and make a video on it. So mm -hmm. I looked into how we can use CRISPR-Cas13 as both a diagnostic and a potential treatment for COVID-19. Um, yes. A lot, a lot of big words there, but yeah. <laughs> it's fine. And, uh, I, 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 I'll keep up as much as possible. If I've got any questions, I will definitely ask. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, then, and then like the last thing is you actually like with the knowledge you just have, actually like make something new. Mm. So my, my idea was uh, using CRISPR-Cas9 uh, to create peanuts that don't cause allergies. Yes. Um, so I have a nut allergy. And like without, if if I if I, could, if I could just try peanut butter, like everyone like talks so, so highly about peanut butter, like it's so awesome. And stuff. Actually, like, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna d um, dig it any harder. But I basically PBJ man is the way forward, PBJ? bro. <laughs> okay. It's okay. it's the way forward, man. Uh, I I I know what you're referring to that's uh, it's Nufri, right? Is that how you say it? Nufri, yes. Nufri, it's yeah. a really interesting project, man. I, I like the idea of it. Yeah, we're trying to actually like uh, put it forward and stuff. It's uh like. I, it's been kind of slow right now, like progress wise, but once we actually like find a lab and I'm going to uni next year, right? So I'll, I'll have a bunch of access to like, mm, labs and professors mm. and stuff. And I'm going to a food university that like, they specialize in food, University of Guelph. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity for me like to, you know, actually explore that idea further. And that's actually, like, insane. Build it so that, that, that would be pretty insane. Yeah. That is insane. Um, but anyways, back to, back to the CRISPR kit. So how I even got started with that. So I was just basically just looking around like, you know, what are some experiments that I can do and stuff? And then I ran into this website called The Odin. Uh, and The Odin, they sell all these, like, kits and stuff. And you mm -hmm. mentioned, right, you found these kits. Yeah, I, I've seen thing, on Odin, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny thing about The Odin is that a lot of people find them really controversial, like, obviously, right? Yes, yes. Um, and, like, it's not actually, like, a normal thing to, like, be selling, like, CRISPR to, like, the public and stuff. Like, that's something, like, this guy who 
founded the Odin, had to go like, through like a bunch of like hurdles, like through and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think he like lost his like job or whatever because like people were like you know like super skeptical about him. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so so he started this company and he started like doing all these things and um so far it's been i mean going pretty well for him his company is still a thing like uh, i can like buy these kits off of him and you know like actually do these experiments uh but yeah, yeah it, is, it is a bit controversial and stuff it is i believe there's a lot more vendors doing it now though um a lot more are people they? are um yeah there, there are a lot more people like um selling CRISPR kits and just because of the just because of i think how easy it is to produce um, how easy it is to produce them uh, just as proteins. I think, uh, I can't remember now, I'll probably have to do, do some research after this and point some to you, but I know a lot of like, a lot of manufacturers in China just make it for companies because oh. a lot of, yeah, because basically a lot of um, pharmaceuticals and even biotech companies are literally just playing around with CRISPR like constantly. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's interesting, I, I guess I guess Odin was the was the only resource you had access to. Yeah, I mean, for time. the public is it, for the public basically. Yeah, like for like companies and stuff. Of course, they mm. have their own like CRISPR vendors and whatever. But for, for the public, the only one I really know of that makes it like accessible is is the Odin so far. Yeah, I don't know. But if you have, you find others like sure, send them over. Yeah, yeah, I definitely will do. Um, I I I think I was researching into this quite a while back. I found. I, I mean, it's just what really baffled me was just how easily accessible it was, and um, it was just. <laughs> I think it was crazy. And the thing is, I don't have any. I don't think I have any close friends that are necessarily playing around with CRISPR. Because if I did, I'd probably have injected a few bits into myself by now. So I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing that yeah. I don't have any friends that are, that are um, yeah uh, that are actively doing it. But but yeah, if I if I do come to Cor- uh, to Toronto and I and I and I give you a shout, just say no. Um, just. <laughs> just just say no because i'll definitely right. get i'll definitely be injecting myself with something there um yeah, yeah, so no, you don't want to do that you don't want to do that